All right, you guys. So today I want to talk about this video was actually sent into my Discord a good amount of times. Um, and so this this video that we're going to be going over, just kind of a disclaimer to anyone out there that might, um, you know, might be triggered by this. Uh, so a little bit of a trigger warning. Um, if like feederism or like forcing someone to eat or anything like that might trigger you, you might want to click off this video. I mean, I feel like you saw the title of the video, so you should be fine. But so the title of this video is in a relationship with a feeder uh my story so this is wow okay this is from <laughs> the youtuber eerie go brock i'm probably saying that wrong uh but this is uh this is her video and uh, i've heard that it's a it's a pretty interesting um it's a pretty pretty interesting video so let's go into it and uh i'm kind of curious to see see what she has to say because i have i haven't seen it at all so i'm kind of curious to see uh what her thoughts are here so here we go. Hey guys, um, you know, I'm still shocked to this moment that uh, most of you have stuck around and you didn't go anywhere. You're still subscribed. This is shocking because I haven't been here for over a year. And I I'm assuming that she makes YouTube videos and I, I don't, I've never heard of her. So I don't know like what types of videos she made back in the past, but yeah. I think I... I think you deserve to know what happened to me over the course of this year and it's very important for me to tell my story and it's it's pretty morbid so I have to release trigger warnings. This is a story about feederism, this is a story about dark fetishes and uh, emotional abuse. So if you So again, like uh, she said herself, like if those are things that maybe uh, will... Uh trigger you at all maybe um you know again this video might not be for you i'm gonna speed it up just a little bit she talks a little slow uh so there we go and uh let's keep going if you are not willing to listen to something like that you shouldn't just don't watch for the rest of you um uh, my name is rachel i am from an eastern european country originally and over the I don't know what it is, but oh, what's up, Ian? My friend Ian's here. Um, I don't know what it is about these uh, accents, but they are very cool to me. Course of the last year and a half, I was in an abusive relationship with a feeder. Um, I met this guy on Tinder, and I immediately fell in love. I don't know how to explain this. I was smitten. He was intelligent. He was funny. He was. Y'all need. Y'all need to be careful on Tinder and Bumble, okay? Some of y'all, some of y'all getting too comfortable in there. I was one of them back in the day. I'm not going to lie, but hey, it is what it is. Handsome, very handsome. And he showered me with compliments. You know, before that, I was very unsure about the whole dating experience because um, the country that I moved to, it's thinness that is valued in women. And I felt a little bit left out because I have always been on the bigger side. I've never been morbidly obese, and I'm simply overweight, um, but still on the bigger side. So this guy was perfect. His name was Dan. Let's call him Dan. Um, I bet his real name was actually Dan. She's like, oh, crap. <laughs> I did that once in a video. I was like, whatever. I'm just going to lie. Like, his name's not really what I said just now. And it was, it was wonderful. He treated me beautifully the first few months. Uh, we would be going out to dinner dates two or three times a week. He would always pay for them and he would always encourage me to eat dessert, to eat something deep fried. And I never really paid attention to this. I didn't know about the feeder community. I I was pretty innocent when it when it came to fetishes and stuff. So this is just for anyone out there, if you're on if if you just started dating someone and they're very nice at the start, it's probably gonna be a red flag, okay? <laughs> like that. I did not know what was in store for me. So I just thought, oh, he's so sweet, but I shouldn't have that dessert. I shouldn't have that pie. I mean, uh, no, you're beautiful. You're wonderful. You should definitely have this dessert. Over the course of the four months that we were dating, uh, we never had sex. He said that he wants to establish emotional connection first, and then we will explore the intimate side of our relationship. I, I mean, that sounds good to me. It's probably better than most dudes nowadays, <laughs> at least at the start. I have high sex drive, but I decided he's a keeper. He's such a good guy. I can wait. Four months into the relationship, he invites me to a dinner with his family, and of course, all ladies here will understand, it's an important event. 
when a guy that you're dating invites you to meet his mom and his dad and you always feel special that it's a pretty important event i came to his parents house and i was surprised because all of his family members were morbidly obese and he himself was skinny and i thought either his mom cheated on his dad or dan just <laughs> dang dude <laughs> she, she just went straight for she <laughs> won a genetic lottery in the house i saw pictures of his family and one of these pictures included a morbidly obese man and i asked about the man and he said this is ron my brother oh right um is he coming today no he died he died mm -hmm. at the age of 31 from a heart attack and i felt horrible i felt oh shit i shouldn't have asked asked i should have i should have done something about it i should have for example uh expressed my condolences to to his mother and maybe i would have learned the truth back, like straight at that moment in that moment but uh, it's so sad that she's like you can tell that she she's like already like I should have done this like I I think like I don't obviously I haven't seen this video so I don't know what she's went through but like you don't know what you don't know what you're getting into right hindsight's always 2020 so don't like make yourself feel like oh, I should have done this like I should have known like why why should you have known like you had no idea right like you, you didn't know that this stuff was going on why would you know it'd be weird for you to know actually so like there's nothing wrong with not like prying it like because like for me if i asked that and someone said oh he died at 31 i would be like okay i don't want to talk about that at all like holy crap let's move on and i'm sure that's probably what she did so i just don't feel bad for you know not knowing what was going to be coming because you just you had no idea i was too shy and i thought this woman has just lost her son i shouldn't be in, like i shouldn't talk about it and i didn't um five months into the relationship and dan offers to move in together and it's a big step, five months, it's a big step. And he said, you know, I I found this emotional connection with you and I think we will be fantastic together. And he talked about future life and even having kids and family and all that. And I really wanted to have a family. So we moved in. The very first day as we moved in, uh, he found a place himself and um, we were paying rent 50-50. So I was just giving 50% of the rent to him directly and he was paying it out to the landlord. The first day of us moving in together, we had sex, but it was weird. Uh, Dan insisted on wearing clothes. He was wearing, he was completely clothed. Myself, I was completely naked. That was his thing. And he felt very aloof, detached from reality. And it was very, it, it was, it was bad. It was very, it was nothing. And after that, he didn't even cuddle with me. He just went away to his bedroom. We lived in separate bedrooms and we never discussed it. And I just, I just assumed these were the rules of our sexual relationship. That's what it's happening. I didn't know how to talk about these things. Well, that doesn't sound very fun. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, this probably all has to do with the whole feederism stuff. I obviously have no experience with that at all. With him. He also said that as we are living together, he will be the cook. He will be cooking food. And uh, I have no business being in the kitchen and i was surprised and actually thrilled because in my home <laughs> country men never do any domestic chores i mean rarely okay and it's considered a woman's role in the house to cook and clean and all that and i was actually thrilled that this guy uh he was he is canadian by the way decided to canadians should have known be the cook but everything that he cooked was super calorie dense and I always felt uncomfortable after after eating together because I always felt bloated. I always felt kind of disgusting. And he would love that. He would touch my belly and he would ask me, do you feel how expanded your belly is? And I felt like, yeah, I'm, I'm dying, like literally. And he said, you have no idea how sexy you are right now. And I still thought this was a compliment. Uh, I was piling up pounds pretty fast. It would have been much worse if not for my job, because my job required a lot of exercise, a lot of stamina, a lot of strength. It was very physical. So I think I was burning a lot. Otherwise, I would have been easily around 400 pounds right now. And uh, I only grew to 265. That was my highest weight. Jeez, man. This is... I, I just... I can't even imagine being in that position like I, I really I, I I really can't like I feel so like bad for her and like there 
the thing that's sad is like there are so many other people that are in these positions um and they feel stuck because they i think that's one good thing uh that happens with like the health at every size movement or um body positivity and, and stuff like that is it it makes people feel like they have worth even if they are overweight a lot of people feel like we were talking about earlier in the stream actually is like you feel like because you are overweight you are therefore worthless and um you will let someone treat you poorly in a relationship um and this is just about weight this is abusive relationships in general right is like you you feel like you are worthless or not worth someone else investing time in you so you end up stuck in a relationship that is you know abusive harmful it's a feederism type of deal um because you feel like well there's nothing else i could really do there's no one else i could really find um and it's 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 really really sad when you get stuck in that kind of that loop i guess and he was very unhappy with that he was asking if i'm dieting or if i'm purging or if i'm doing cleansing therapy whatever and i always said no to that and he would always be very inquisitive and suspicious and angry if i did not if i didn't say things that he didn't like he never hit me i must say that there was no physical abuse involved but it was purely emotional and verbal abuse he would call me fat he would call me all sorts of derogatory terms a pig a cow at least for me they were derogatory i think for him they were compliments because that was his thing he got off of it but I felt cr like crap, and I, I just didn't know how to stand up to him. I just didn't know how. Fast forward to January 2020. This is uh, the, the month when our country, where we resided, went into lockdown due to COVID. Um, but nobody knew that it's going to happen. So I realized that I'm unhappy in this relationship. The last straw was when he... when. I asked him why is he not touching me what's going on with our sexual life we weren't together for sexually for two months and he screamed that I'm just ugly that I am um, unattractive and he showed me the women that he's following on YouTube that if I want ever to be attractive to him I must look like these women and uh, these were some big youtubers including uh, a hyper morbidly obese woman named Chantal Marie I think her <laughs> nickname on youtube is beauty Be foodie beauty and the oh, other one thanks. was uh, hungry fat chick and i think the the latter is doing like real life porn and both okay well, i didn't know this was <laughs> i didn't know this was coming this is not a hit piece video okay i didn't know that was coming up whatever <laughs> just i just want to put that out there i think that treating like if you're in a relationship with someone it is so wrong to treat them poorly um based on how they they might look right like if, if you're in a relationship like it, or to treat them poorly and not let them know right and then to eventually be like screaming at them and being like you need to be this way or else i'm gonna leave you it's like dude why not just let them know hey this is what is attractive to me and if like if that's not something that you're interested in doing like we should not like i don't know man it's both <sighs> of them are catering to feeders he claimed that he was paying these women for uh, specific content and he didn't need me anymore because these women were satisfying him sexually and if I want to be attractive to him I must look like these women and they are something like I don't know 500 pounds they're oh too much too much so I said no no my health is important I already gained a lot of weight it's uncomfortable for me to put on tights to tie my own shoelaces I just I'm not happy I'm not happy with what's going on bye bye he got angry, he kicked me out of the house, I had nowhere else to go, and in that country I had no family, no friends. Oh. And in two days, lockdown, and I had to move back in with him. Since January until mid-May, I was stuck with my ex. And he still demanded 50% of rent. And I said, well, I lost my job, and I did lose my job. My employer was a dickhead he did not he did not pay me anything any security uh, he just said oh well in your contract there is a force majeure clause so you're not entitled to anything if there is a force majeure situation and clearly a zombie apocalypse is a force majeure situation so fuck off <laughs> and i explained to my ex i explained to dan that i can't pay you i don't have the money and he said well there is a way and basically what he did he solicited he uh, encouraged me. No, that's not the right word. 
I think the right word will be he coerced me. He coerced me to take lewd pictures. There was no porn, but there was nudity. And he would be selling these pictures on some nefarious websites. Snapchat. Um, uh, this is so... Man, this is so sad, dude. Just girls. Some others. I will not... I, You know, I don't want to promote these websites, okay? But he was selling my nudes, basically, and my lingerie pics. And he would be taking all of the money. So basically, he was pimping me out on the internet. And he was forcing me to do more and more provocative poses and all that. And he's, he would say that he's using this money as my part of the rent. What I did not know is that his landlord was a very nice man. And he never took any rent during the lockdown. He was oh my God, dude. understanding. His own son was, a was in a difficult situation. And he just let us live there for free. I didn't know that. All the interaction was through my controlling and abusive ex. Um, I just like, just like, let me know where he lives. You know, I just want, I just want to talk. You know what I mean? I just want to talk. <laughs> so he was using me for four months. And don't worry, that's my cat in the background. She's helping me heal. She's really helping me heal. So um, the last straw for me was when I accidentally walked on my walked in on my ex-boyfriend when he was in the bathroom and he forgot to lock the door. And it was the first time in almost a year that we knew each other when I saw him naked. I never saw him, saw him naked before. Because like I said, every time we had sex, he was clothed. And I realized what he was hiding. Loose skin, a lot of it. Uh, oh, like, hey, whoa. Yo, I'm sorry. I, I was not expecting that, man. It was, what a twist. Holy smokes. Um, That definitely explains a lot. That definitely explains a lot. Holy crap, dude. His belly, his arms, his legs, everything was wrinkly. Everything was hanging like sheets. And I, I saw that before. <laughs> My first boyfriend had a gastric bypass surgery. He lost a lot of weight in a very short period of time and he had that much loose skin my ex was angry he was enraged he threw objects at me in my direction he never hit me like i said but he threw objects in my direction he was screaming uh and i asked him did you have a gastric bypass and he didn't speak to me for almost a week but eventually he broke down and he he explained to me that he told me the truth he never had a brother. The morbidly oh obese man in the- Oh my, dude, how? Is this real? Is this a real story? I feel like I'm watching a movie right now. This is unbelievable, bro. He straight up made up a brother like that. What is going on right now? I am blown away, <laughs> dude. I feel like I just watched like Saw or something where there's a twist at the end. Or, like, holy crap, dude. Oh my gosh. Pictures with his family. That was himself. I just did not recognize him because at his heaviest, Dan weighed 630 pounds. He was enormously huge. And his name really was Ron. He changed it after he lost the first 200 pounds to Dan to celebrate the start of a new life. So when I found out about it, I just realized, oh, I am stuck with a crazy man, with a crazy, abusive, unstable man. Absolutely. And I just ran away. Uh, he would be calling me incessantly. I just went away. I took like only the most expensive stuff that I had. It's okay. So this might, people might not like this, but like, I, I do feel kind of bad for the guy. Not because, like, he's obviously a terrible person, like, trash, trash person. But, like, I, f I feel bad because I know how isolating having loose skin can be, okay? Again, not at all, at all, even a little bit trying to say that what he did is understandable. It's not, okay? Not at all. But, like, I think that this is a big reason why I like to talk about loose skin so much and I like to bring up this stuff because 
I know that there's a lot of people struggling with it and there's a lot of people that feel like they are like disgusting, there's something wrong with them, they're monsters, and I just don't think it's the truth. Again, the guy Dan or Ron, whatever his name was, like trash human being, like absolutely bad. Not not a good person at all. But I I I want people to understand that like having loose skin doesn't make you some sort of freak, you know? Um but yeah, ugh. Like my uh, iPad, my money, uh, like I had about $100 left, uh, my jewelry, and some other thing that I don't want to talk about. So I went away, and he would be calling me the whole day and blackmailing me. He was threatening me that he would post my lewd pictures to Pornhub. Or Dude, see, and stuff like that. Like, if you, because, hey, I know how y'all are. I know how it is. I don't want to say y'all. I know how people are in 2020, okay? Like, people send things, okay? And I think, like, if you, like, if someone sends you something and then for you to use that as blackmail, that makes you such a trash person. Like, that makes you such a piece of garbage. Like, if someone trusts you enough to send you a picture that is, you know, lewd or nude or whatever you want to say, and then you... You, you try and blackmail them, one, that is illegal, but two, it's just, it makes you such a trash, like, lowest tier human being for doing that. Like, disgusting. All sorts of free porn hostings that my family will see them, he will send them to my family. So I went straight to the police, and police in that country, it's also a third world, uh, sorry, blah. it was also a third world country. At least... Well, economically, not third world, but human rights wise, yes. And I thought I would just tell the police about the blackmailing, but they just blew me off. They just said, you're a whore, get out of here. Nobody helped me. Jeez. And we were still in lockdown. I was actually fined by the police for violating the quarantine. I was fined an equivalent of $70, and I only had $100 with me. So I was Jeez. left with peanuts. And I've, I managed to get myself, not in the first one or second one, like I called six or seven different women's rights organizations, and finally I found a shelter. I stayed there for three weeks. I had to change my mobile no number, and uh, because Dan was, he was just stalking me, basically. And uh, after staying in that shelter for three weeks, I had to move out, because they just, they just couldn't let me stay there any longer. Luckily, um, I went into a religious organization affiliated hostel, Christian hostel, mm. and I stayed there. And after the travel ban was lifted in the end of June, I could go back to my home country, to my family. Here I'm healing. I am losing weight. I'm not yet the same size I was when I started this relationship, but I lost a total of 20 pounds. So I need to lose 20 more, 25 more, let's be honest. Um, <laughs> So I'm staying with my family at this moment, and I just want to talk about this. I never knew anything about feederism. I just started learning about this dark, toxic community that is killing women all around the world. Killing, literally. Well, I mean, it's killing men and women. It's, it's, it's not just women. And I want to use this opportunity to come back to my YouTube channel to start talking about these things. I will also have some lighthearted content. Um... There will be some weight loss content as well, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I will do reactions to feeder content. I don't know. I just want to regain my power and I want to help other women like me who are stuck in a dark side of the body positivity movement, who allow their ill-meaning partners to control them and use them like that and destroy their health. So thank you so much for sticking around thank you so much for not unsubscribing from my channel most of you have stayed i really appreciate it i hope you won't go away because i'm i'm planning on uh reviving this channel and be consistent on it i need your thoughts i need your content ideas i need your support i'll be honest thank you so much guys for listening to me it was very important thank you and i'll hopefully i'll see you soon wow well First thing I want to say is definitely go go over to her channel and support her. I'll have it down, linked down in the description. Um, feederism is really interesting um, because obviously with her her situation, it was 
not like she didn't know that she was going through it. She didn't believe that it was consensual. Um, and it didn't seem like it was consensual. And so, but at the same time, like, I know that I'm playing devil's advocate here. There are a lot of people that are in those situations that it is consensual and they are totally fine with it. Now, is that, am I saying that it's morally good and it's morally okay? No, but I would say that that is a lot less bad than being in a, in a situation where you are not consenting to it. And the person is kind of um, forcing you into this role, right? Something that you're not super interested in. Um, again, it, it's hard for me to say if someone is in a feeder relationship and they are okay with it, should we should we stop that from happening and make them not be able to do that? I don't know. I don't know what the answer is there. Um, do I think that it's probably not good and it's not healthy? Of course not. I don't think that it's healthy. Of course not. I don't think that it's good. But is it... Is it up to me to completely stop them from doing something that they say that they want to do? I don't know. Like it's 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 really really hard. Um, but I, uh, I mean that's I mean that really 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 uh, that's really tough, man. I did not realize that video was going to be as deep as it was. Um, but I really hope that she, um, I really hope that she you know finds finds a way to heal. And um, I mean I hope that she continues making content because. Um, yeah, yeah, like Marsh said, I feel like this video was a lot less about feederism and more about domestic abuse. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, I would agree with that 100%, 100%.